and we're live. We're back, and it is day three with Marla Rutherford. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. So today, I understand we're going to do some more portraits. Mm -hmm. This time, we're going to have a couple of guys. You said. Yeah. So I'm going to be photographing two gentlemen, um, and yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to use different kind of light modifiers and how to take advantage of having a gray background and turning it into black and also turning it into white. So you only need to have one background. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and today, so I just want to, before I forget, I want to remind everyone that you can participate in the contest. So today's theme is shoes. And basically to participate in the contest, you're going to just take your photograph of shoes. You're then going to um, bring those into Lightroom CC, whether it's on the desktop, mobile, web, however you want to do it. Duplicate the photo, which I understand is not <coughs> really possible on the mobile. <coughs> so just take the same shot twice if you have to. And then from there, uh, once you duplicate the photo, you're going to um, uh, retouch or correct one of them uh, using uh, Lightroom CC. So if you can run that video, Chris, of the contest there we go so people can know what to do so this is showing you kind of the walkthrough of what to do uh duplicate the photo make all your adjustments to it right there in lightroom those are all non-destructive adjustments which is great and then once you're happy with your photo you're just you're going to take those two photos that you have the before and the after in an album um share them and it will create a link on lightroom.adobe.com and once you have that link you will copy it and um, submit it to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash, is it submit? Submit Adobe. Submit Adobe. Thank you. And uh, that way the moderators can see your entries and get them ready and, and Marla will pick a winner sometimes cl close to the end of the segment here. So Marla. Yes. I understand you want to show us some of your uh, different work. Yes. All right. So, um, yesterday, if you guys were with us the past two days, I showed my more commercial work, my commercial website, which was MarlaRutherford.com. Um, but I also do wedding work and I've been shooting, so I've been shooting commercially for about 15 years full time, but I started to shoot weddings about seven years ago. Um, yeah, that guy's taking a picture of the back of my head. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so the reason why I got into wedding work is I moved from Los Angeles back to Colorado and there was a lot of um, jobs available for wedding work and I have to say that weddings, to, in my opinion, is one of the more difficult industries to photograph. And she, she's being nice. It, <laughs> it is very <laughs> difficult. So, And I used to have this impression that wedding photographers were kind of like, oh, you're a wedding shooter, but now I have a whole new oh, respect yeah. for wedding photographers. Um, it's, it's the hardest way to make money as a photographer, it as is far a, as I'm concerned. It is so hard, but if you're good at it and you yeah. love doing it, you can make a lot of money. great money doing it. And the reason why I ended up going into weddings is when the economy turned um, really bad, kind of in, what was that, 2010 or something? Um, a lot of commercial clients were pulling out and not spending a lot of money on commercial work. So I ended up getting to weddings because no matter what, even if the economy is bad, people will always they'll still always fall in married. love yep. and they'll always still get married. So um, it was it ended up being a little bit of a backup plan and then it turned into being 50% of my income for my business. Wow. Um, so it's very different clients. The magazine world, the advertising world is very different than the wedding world. Your wedding world is going to be mostly millennials. They're not companies. They're individual people. They're couples. So I separated the companies from one another and my wedding company is called Cake Knife Photography and so I created a whole new website just for my wedding work. Um, and that's a good idea because what you don't want from a commercial standpoint is, is a potential client coming to your portfolio and they just see everything. Yeah. Like you shoot you know, portraits, you shoot um, sticks on the ground, you shoot right. landscapes, you shoot travel, you shoot weddings because then they don't know what you really do. Yeah, they don't like know what's what you your, do. What's your specialty? So I appreciate setting up that separate site for that work. Yeah, and you know, it. I, I ain't gonna lie, it's hard to run two companies because you have two different SEO, search engine optimizations, you suddenly have two websites, you have to have two business cards. You, And people do get a little bit confused, um, especially on social media. So there are some challenges that come with having two separate photography companies. Um, 
but it's worked out really, really well for me, especially for wedding clients. Like if they go on the site, everything is wedding photography, so they're not confused right. if they see magazine stuff and whatnot. So it's worked really well in the end because people do want you to be a specialist. And it's sometimes so bad where if they want you to photograph an apple, but you only have oranges in your portfolio, they're gonna be like, oh, you don't know how to photograph no, you're an not apple. Not an apple shooter. Yeah, so you do have to get pretty specific. The simpler and the easier, the easier you make it for your clients to decide that you are a specialist in that field, the more confident they're going to feel in you, uh, feel about you. Um, so this is my wedding website, and so I shoot about 15 weddings a year. I top out at 15. Um, I can't really do that's many. That's a lot. You think? Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot uh, of really, because a lot of um, a lot of very full-time wedding photographers will end up shooting like 30 to 40 weddings a year, and to me. Well, but that's what I'm saying. That's not yeah. your full-time thing. It's, it's not like my full-time thing, so and yeah, it is a lot. So I'll top. I'll top off at about 15. I do travel a lot from my weddings. Um, so about a third of my weddings are out, actually out of state, out of color, um, outside of Colorado. And um, again, like I spoke about yesterday, the style that I have is a very lit kind of style. And I do apply that with my wedding work as well. Now we're not running around with strobe lights all day long, like strobing the ceremony and whatnot. But during our, our formal portraits, we will light them artificially and create kind of a very poppy look. So this photo in particular was actually shot in San Francisco. Um, so she is a Marilyn Monroe lookalike, and she is a girlfriend of mine from Hollywood. And so they flew me out to San Francisco to photograph their wedding. Now, usually you see these people back here with their cameras. Now, this you could tell this was shot about three years ago because now I kind of request my couples to have what you call unplugged ceremonies where nobody can have their phone and nobody can have their camera during the ceremony because it does get in the shot and it yes. can become a challenge and an issue as a photographer. Uncle Bob. Yeah, exactly. And they'll step in the aisle, they'll yes. get right in front of you, you Uncle have to work Bob your way around. Uncle Bob has no respect for you as <laughs> yeah. a photographer. Yeah, so. Uncle Bob's gonna get the shot. And of course you can't force your clients to do anything, but I do send them a list of recommendations of just lessons that I've learned in the past, and now all of my clients do unplug ceremonies, and they love it. So everyone's more present, and mom and dad don't have that phone in front of their face when, they're, right. when you get the kissing shot. So I'm just going to kind of go through these. So here we're, again, using lighting. It's hard to capture action shots like this unless you're throwing some artificial lighting on them. Um, and I brought actually, for those of you who are interested in lighting, I'll show you kind of what I use for shots like this. This is called a silver magnum. So I will have an assistant and I also have a second shooter on my weddings and my assistant will take care of all the lighting for me. So this is a silver magnum and you can buy them at B&H, you can buy them at Sammy's and it really kind of creates like a really poppy, kind of cool, colorful look, and you can capture action like these boys jumping right here. Um, also, if they're a little bit, you know, younger, like a lot of the groom and the groomsmen will be between 20 and 30 years old, they can handle sil the silver reflector. The silver shows everything, so yeah. it's a very, very, very strong light. And every wrinkle, every, every crease, wrinkle. So every I do pimple, every, tend to, every, yeah. <laughs> I do tend to avoid <laughs> using it if I'm shooting perhaps older people. Um, but for younger people, their skin can handle it, and you get so much light out of it. Because a lot of times we're shooting early on in the day where my sun is bright high in the sky, and I need to compete with it, so I'll use silver. So um, I'm just going to kind of go through these. This is a ceremony shot. Um, I shoot at this venue a lot. This is a castle in Colorado. So I always use a second shooter. I have a second shooter with me. Um, they capture in between moments that I can't capture because I'm focused on something else. And then everyone gets a flash drive um, of all the images. And then a lot of times they'll order a wedding album as well. So this again was shot with that silver magnum. So now that's an interesting point. So you give the, the wedding party or the wedding, the, the bride and groom, uh, flash drive of all the images, mm -hmm. full res? Full res, so high res. So I upload it to a site where they can order prints and they can order canvases and medals and they can send that site to their guests. But what comes with the price of what they're paying me is a flash drive of full reprint rights for personal use only yes. of high res JPEGs. And a lot yep. of times I'll not only give them a color file, but if I think that image looks really would 
be really great in black and white as well, I'll give them a black and white file as well. So, and then I would say about 80% of my clients get a wedding album. If they don't get a wedding album, it's pretty heartbreaking because you put all this work into it and then it's so anticlimactic because you just hand them a flash drive with all yeah, your beautiful they work. Post it to Facebook. Yeah, yeah and done. then they're yeah. like, oh, I'll do an album. They never ever have time to do their own album. So um, I do kind of push the wedding albums because for me as a photographer, I want to see my work in a final product and I want to show them the story of what we worked so yeah. hard to shoot. So, um, Very cool. Let me see, I wonder if Do you only any give them edited final images or do you just give them everything? Oh, no, 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 edited for yeah, sure. Okay. No, don't give them everything. Um, I definitely so edit down quite what, a bit. Like how many images on average would be on that drive? Um, so it depends on how many hours, obviously. I'm trying to think of how much I average per hour. Um, but they'll have a, they'll have quite a few, anywhere from like 500 to 1,000. Well, yeah. that's a lot, okay. But I'm photographing with a second, you gotta remember I have a second photographer with me, so we're doubling up on the images. And um, sometimes I'll come home and I'll have about 3,500 images that I have to go through. So. And so your edits are very minor then? Yeah. You're not spending retouching time on those? No, no, no. Okay. So, but I edit pretty heavy um, and if the bride does not look attractive in an image, the image goes out. So, okay. yeah. So I really focus on her. Yeah, because at the end of the day, weddings are about the bride. They're but, not yeah. about the groom. <laughs> yeah, the guys, I mean, these are generalizations obviously, but the guys definitely... It's, it's, it's the truth. Yeah, the guys definitely don't I wouldn't say are as concerned. Um, now it depends if the moment is amazing and she maybe doesn't look as a try. I'll, I'll maybe you know still turn it in, but I do really look at her and make sure that she looks stunning in most of the images. Um, otherwise, it does not go up on the site. That's just how I would be if I was a bride. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I just think about how I would want someone to do it for me. Um, and so we kind of capture in between candid moments. And again, these are the formal portraits where we're lighting this. This is all lit. This is how I get these clouds popping in through here, right? Uh, you can't do this with natural light. And this is two silver magnums that I just showed you earlier. And I am competing with a really harsh sun here, which is over on the right-hand side. So we threw those two silver magnums up there for these ladies. And that's how we get this drama. So this is what I get hired for. People are like, we want this cool, dramatic look. And there's not a ton of wedding photographers who do this look because it's a pain in the butt. You have to drag all your equipment with you. That's why I have an assistant. You gotta know what you're doing and weddings move super fast. So you're on the fly. You gotta mm -hmm. know your technique very quickly. And also you have to remember that these aren't professional models. They're yeah. everyday people. So you not only have to be ready to move quick, but you have to also tell them what to do because they don't know yeah. what to do. Yeah, they don't know. And the one thing, um, another reason why I love using those lights, it's once you pop those babies up, like everyone just lets you do your thing. So because there are a lot of people with cell phones and cameras and they want to start shooting too, everyone wants to be part of a creative process. So they want to be photographing too. And once you put those lights up, everyone's like, oh, wow, this photographer is pro and they you know, kind it's, of it's, stay and back. That's true, because I, I learned that a long time ago, with not with photography, but with actually video. Yeah. Like I, I would go to my daughter's um, you know events at school, and I would bring I would be the the dad with the big you know professional video camera on a nice tripod. All the parents would get out of the way. Yeah. But if I was just holding a regular camcorder, yeah, they don't care. They're, in, they're like we got camcorders too. Yeah. They're, they're all about it. So the uh, more professional you look, the more the rest of everyone will get stay out of your way. Yeah, they stay out of their way once these lights go up and. Um, you know, I can be a pretty dominating factor too. You know, I'm tall, big hair, I can definitely boss and stuff like that. So people for sure tend to kind of stay back a little bit because it is like hurting drunk cats. I mean, you literally have to like gather. I mean, everyone's off to the bar and so you really have to gather a bunch of people and you really have to kind of have a very strong voice. You can't be like a super meek wedding photographer and be like, oh, do you guys mind? Come over here. You're wasting time. You gotta like, have a list and an assistant and all this stuff. These are all learning lessons that took me, the first few weddings I shot, you know, were quite difficult, even though I had a huge background in magazine work, so. Very cool. Yeah, so I'll just kind of, these are just some of the highlights. So I'll just kind of blow through some of these. Um, so we always do room shots as well. So this is what my second shooter does. She or he does all the details, all the room shots. This is the stuff for the venue because the venues get you a lot of work. So you want to get in with the venues. And um, also this is great for the albums. These are fillers for the albums. These people put a lot of money and effort into details. And so you need to cover those as well. 
Um, and that's usually the second photographer's job. And so that's just some of the little highlights. Nice work. Thank you. Um, so anyway, so that's just some of the work. And then you'll see over here that, you know, you people, brides love it if you win awards. So try to get some awards, put in, put a lot of your um, photos into competitions, even if they don't know what the award is. Like if you just yeah. put that little emblem on your website, they love it. Um, this talks about all the wedding albums that we do. I put, I don't really put my pricing on, I put my start rate on there. And then I have um, my blog and then I have this FAQ section. Hold on, sorry, let me and just And how go. often do you blog? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, that's, that's the response I was expecting. Blogs I, are one of those things. Don't start it oh if you're not going to keep I it know, up. Yeah. I know. I got so slammed this season, and so I haven't blogged in uh, maybe a couple months. You I, you yeah. be minimum yeah. at least once a month. Um, so anyway, so here's an FAQ that I thought was kind of important. I kind of base my sales off of fear. So, I mean, I'll say, are you sure the other wedding photographer that you're looking at knows what they're doing? Are they are they backing up all the images while they're shooting? Are they shooting with two cards in the camera and the second card is backing up? Because if that first card fails, your whole wedding goes out the window. Um, do they know and, how to light? no one wants to hear about your technical difficulties. Yeah. No one wants to hear that the flash didn't go off when they were kissing. No one wants to hear that, oh, I lost a third of your wedding because the card failed. They don't want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want to hear it, and but it happens. And a lot of um, people who go into weddings, a lot of times it's going to be the cousin or the uncle or the best friend who bought a nice camera but it's never shot a wedding before. Uncle Bob. And, yeah, and it's like <laughs> these are all things that the bride and the groom need to know because it's a really fast day, it's a really important day. And, you know, are they backing up all the images? Like if it's super cloudy outside and it starts to rain, how are they going to light? everybody inside the dark chapel you know I mean these are all things that pop up on the wedding day that you have to kind of be prepared for so I have a whole FAQ section in here for my clients and um, they can kind of go through it I don't know if they read it or not but I mean this is at least some information as to why they should hire a professional and um, yeah so that's gotten me quite a bit of work having that section on my website so very cool all right, so I think uh, Michael has, has already started doing a lot in the studio, getting ready for you. Okay. Um, did you have anything else before you go get prepped? Um, so I'm going to show you all. I'm going to go. Can I go back to my other site real quick? And I'm going to show them what we're going to do in the studio. So I talked about the weddings, but I'm actually going to go back to the commercial site that we've kind of looked at the past two days because I'm going to show you all what we're actually going to be doing in the studio today. Um, the past two days I've kind of been focusing on how to take a great headshot, um, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to show you guys different lighting techniques, and I'm also going to show you, let's say you don't want to invest in a bunch of different backgrounds, I'm going to show you that the best background to get is going to be a medium gray, because you can turn a medium gray into a white, and you can also turn it into a black. Let's say you have to do three different setups in like 20 minutes. That would be a perfect background for you guys to get, and that's all through lighting. So I'm going to show you a little bit of lighting techniques and that kind of trick. Awesome. So, okay. Well, you weren't here earlier. Michael has a new nickname. What is it? Baby Genius. Baby Genius. Yes, so that's what he will be referred to as from here on out. <laughs> How well, did that happen? Nicole. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. She just, just said it and like, okay, we're going to make this stick. So okay. while you're over there, that's your assistant. <laughs> Baby genius. All right, baby genius, you ready? <laughs> I love it. That's it. Hashtag baby genius, folks. All right, awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, so I'll head on over All right. there. So they're going to head over to the studio and get set up and start telling you about the set, the lights, the subjects, and uh, away they go. I heard the name okay. Randy. You've heard the name? Yes, Randy hopefully is here. Okay, so what's the plan again, Mara? Uh, so Randy is going to be super fast. I'm just going to quickly show like a before and after with makeup with Randy. And then we're going to bring Carlos in. Carlos is going to be more um, like fashion type. Okay. Photos. Do we want to make sure that the lights are okay? Yeah. Do you want to do a just, test shot with me maybe? I can't find my glasses. Uh, 
Okay, so. So we have three lights, uh, like the other days. One light for the hair, how would you call this? Uh, so that's a hair light. Hair so light. We found a crazy name for the light going to the air, we call it a hair light. Yeah. I think it makes sense. <laughs> this is a super crazy super name. Super crazy name. That's so unique. So unique. Uh, there is one field, uh, background field. How it background it? light. Background light. Uh -huh. uh, it's a new backdrop, backdrop paper, by the way, let me show. We need more angle. Here we go. Now you should be able to see it. If we switch to the other GoPro. And then let's put this magnum on the background. So we're going to put the magnum on the background light. So backdrop paper. Uh, this is a gray. Do you remember the name of this gray? Or? Um, it's right on there. Oh, OK. So it's uh, neutral gray core. OK. I don't think this one is by Savage. I don't think no? so. No. Oh, by Superior. Yeah. By so Superior. you basically have two main companies. You have Superior and you have Savage. Savage. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know Superior. Okay. And you have the main light with the beauty dish. Yeah. So this and is a silver, silver one. Mm -hmm. So I use a lot of silver. Use the other one. I use a lot of silver just because I really like the contrast and the pop that happens with silver. You can use a white beauty dish if you want something a little bit softer and a little bit less contrasty. Just for today's purposes, I'm going to stick to my silver just because it's just my lighting style. And then we have a silver magnum on the background and then we have a silver hair light. So I am just a silver girl. But a lot of times people do use white umbrellas and soft boxes. And if we have time, I'll show you the difference between silver and white and what it does to skin and um, the final product. So the final okay. look. S um, so the models today are Adobe employees. Yeah. And they, they have been super nice to come. So you want to do a test shot? Yeah. OK, let's remove the cap first. Yes. Pro, pro tip, pro tip. <laughs> yeah, remove the cap. OK, here we go. Uh, do you have tethering, uh, Mr. Terry White? Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, the background looks nice. Yeah. Love this background. And which background was that again? It's a gray, neutral gray. Neutral, neutral gray, gray by, by Superior. By Superior. Yeah. Neutral gray car. I don't know if it makes a difference. But. So I'm actually going to have you, um, I'm going to just show up before and after of makeup. So I'm going to have you write down what all of the settings are. Because when he's done with makeup, I'm going to. Oh, you're going to change. Yeah, okay, because uh, I'm going to change once Carlos gets in the lighting okay, a Okay, so bit. first maybe we bring Randy, yeah. we take a picture, and then and I can document everything. Yeah. Okay, so okay, Randy, everyone in the chat, please welcome Randy. All right. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Where do you want uh, Okay, you can come here. You want to introduce yourself, maybe explain what you do at Adobe? Where where right? Right? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. my name is Randy Reese. Uh, I'm a project coordinator here at Adobe. You have the other GoPro. Right? Oh, where? <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing, Wendy? I'm doing well. I'm changing my glasses so that I can actually see. Ah, there we go. All right. What do you want? So you're a project manager at Adobe? Yes, I'm project manager. Project, project manager. Project manager. So uh, if, if you're looking at a lot of different Adobe blogs, specifically in the worlds of Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator, uh, I herded the cats that made all that possible. Nice. Okay. Do you want me to dim the ambient lights or? Uh? Yeah, let's. Yeah, good idea. Okay. And then let's turn this modeling light on. <sighs> that, did that go on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here. That should be okay, no? Just enough for the GoPro so you can see us. Yeah. Okay. So let's have you stand on that piece of tape. Yeah. Right here. Here we go. Okay. And so, so you guys, I'm gonna. I showed you the headshots the other day. I'm gonna kind of treat this as a headshot as well. So I'm gonna angle him a little bit this way because remember, you don't want them forward towards the camera ever. So let's angle your body a little bit. Go a little bit more, and then chin this way. You can move your feet too. <laughs> and then chin this way towards the camera. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And then let's just put your hands in your pocket. Perfect. Stay right there. Now let's bring your chin down a little bit. Okay. 
Hold on. And then, so here's a little trick of the trade. You're going to bring the, you're going to tell them to bring the chin down just a touch, and then you're, they're going to stick it out just a touch. These are millimeter movements. So stick your chin out. And also, this is such a weird request that they usually start laughing, and then you get this really beautiful, <laughs> genuine smile. So have your camera ready when you say this, right. and be like, bring your chin down and out. Perfect. Stay right there. All right. And let's fix that. Um, rim light on him. Let's just turn it down. So you're going to just move the knob to the left. Okay. So to let you know, Marla, we are at six. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's bring it down to four. And then you're going to move it a little bit to the right. A bit to the right? Yeah. So offset. Yeah. Perfect. And then I need um, Heather in here. Yeah. You Heather the already? Mm -hmm. yeah, I want her to see this picture real quick. Okay. So big smile, Randy. Perfect. Stay right there. Beautiful. Okay. Gorgeous. Let me take a look here. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So Heather, she's the makeup artist. She was with us yesterday. She went up. Do you want me to... So this, um, I actually don't think he needs a fill. So we're oh, going to take okay. that away. Just take it down. Okay. Look right here. Chin a little bit more this way. Perfect. Stay right there. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, I like it better without the fill. Okay, so I'm going to show you all. So this is um, before, so we have a makeup artist on the set. So this is before makeup, and I just want her to take a look at this picture real quick so we can decide what to do makeup-wise. Oh, here's Heather. So Heather, I just want you to look at this real fast so we can talk about what to do. Okay. Hey, chat, say hi to Heather. So, yeah, so this is the So this the is my makeup artist, and I kind of wanted to first show with Randy um, how having a makeup artist on set will really kind of just help make the person, you know, the best version of themselves. And so I'm going to have her work on some of the red and so a little bit like even out the skin tones and also when someone's bald to help kind of diminish that shine. And this will all save you time in post-production. So which is kind of the theme going on in the past few days is how to save time in post so you guys are not stuck on your computer all day. So, so we will have you go to makeup and hair and I'm going to recreate this later. And so about 15 minutes or so. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Okay. All right. Hi, all. <laughs> okay, so I will document the, the floor. Do you guys have any questions about anything before we start shooting our second model? Yeah, time for question. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. So how, how many assistants do you have usually? Like when you do um, this, like, and you have to be super fast. Like when you were saying, you know, like you visit a company, you have to do 80 shots, 80 people. I only usually, for headshots, I usually only have one assistant. Um, I never ever shoot without an assistant. <laughs> That's okay, for sure. I have one. Okay. Yeah, I use minimum. I have one for bigger, um, more commercial clients for bigger shoots. I can have anywhere from three to four assistants. So, what f stop are you shooting at? Okay, good question. F stop I'm shooting at is seven point one. Um, I'm at two fiftieth, and I'm at ISO one hundred. So 7.1 is a pretty good um, f-stop to be at when you're doing headshots because if you start going to, let's say you start shooting at, I don't know, f-14 or something like that, you can start getting the background in focus and sometimes the background has little dents in it and you'll start to see those little dents pop up because you're shooting at such a high f-stop. You don't want to really go any lower than 7.1 though because then you run into the risk of their ears being out of focus. And if anything, actually I should maybe just jump up a little bit, but I think we're okay. Um, okay. All right. So that's good. Okay, here, so you see I just took some notes just uh, to note uh, the power, each light, hair light, etc. So when Randy will come back, we try to reproduce the same. Uh, well, I can shoot Carlos here. right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. As long as we can maybe recreate something similar. Oh yeah, if, if we don't move the lights, we will be able to shoot uh, something We'll similar. move the lights a little bit, but as long as we yeah, can... Yeah, but we... Really okay, yeah, I think we we can figure it out. Okay, okay. do you want me to call uh, Carlos? Yeah. Okay, let's see if Carlos is ready. So Randy is in makeup, and usually with gentlemen it takes about 15 minutes for makeup and hair. Um, they're just quick little touch-ups. So why Randy's putting makeup, getting his makeup done, we're going to photograph Carlos. I'll use this just in case of here. Hi Carlos, Hello. please join me. That looks good. Thank you. Okay, yeah. where are we? Here, here. 
Okay, Carlos. Uh, also an Adobe employee, if you want to introduce yourself, explain what you do at Adobe. Uh, hello, my name is Carlos. I'm an Adobe employee here. I'm on the facilities team. I work every day closely with Samantha and their design team, a lot of other people. Samantha, here. she was our model uh, yesterday and yep. also on, on Tuesday. Yeah, and I was happy to be on board today to do this photo shoot, so let's see how it goes. Okay, welcome, Carlos. Thank you. Mm. So okay. this is Mara, your photographer. How are you? I'm good. Yes, <laughs> I'm Carlos good. is very excited to have this photo <laughs> taken. <laughs> okay, so let's have you stand on this piece of tape. Okay. So I kind of have to keep the light similar for um, Randy, so I'm just going to show you guys different modifiers and how it kind of changes um, on the face. And then we're going to go into a little bit more fashion and I'm going to show you all how to change the color backdrop. But I don't want to do that just now because Randy's going to be coming back in a second here. So, so let's have for you angle your body. So usually I just come behind the subject and I'm like, and I just kind of grab them and then you can move your feet too. They said that Carlos will be getting a lot of flights. <laughs> 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 and then just clasp your hands in front like this. Okay, so I have a silver um, two-foot... Uh, and Mara has a question for you. Uh, Laura in the chat. Oh, okay. She's asking, what is the minimum of space that you should leave at the top of the person, you know, when you shoot a portrait? Um, how much is this? Like a foot? Yeah. Yeah, let me try with my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One probably, foot. Probably One foot. about um, this much, I would say. Yeah, you definitely want it. That's a good question. You definitely want to watch your cropping for sure. And a lot of times people want to put type somewhere like let's say it's for their business card or something like that so and you can always zoom in later so try to step back I'm just kind of shooting a little bit tight today just so you guys can see it good on your computer but hmm. um, yeah. definitely leave some okay. room and uh, where did we get the photo equipment that's King Mark so we use Sammy's which is a local shop I think they are in mm -hmm. LA too yeah have you worked with them before? oh yeah yeah, yeah? I know the boys at Sammy's yeah and they are very nice and uh, so basically yeah, we, we ask all our guests so uh, Marla Nicole and Ashley okay what do you need and we, we identified the shared equipment, you know, what you could share. Mm -hmm. You give it to Sammy's, you say, okay, we need this at this date, one week, and that's it. It was super easy. Yeah. So they delivered everything, like, great company to work with. Like, so. Yeah. So really Sammy's awesome. is great. There's Calumet, and then there's B&H Photo, which is huge. And oh, B&H is a yeah. huge network. You mean? Yeah, oh. B&H is huge. And um, if you guys order from B&H and they ship it to you, then you don't have to pay for tax. So oh. that's huge. So I order a lot of stuff from B&H. Okay, uh, let's take a quick little portrait. So again, this is an OCF beauty dish. It's silver, it's made by Profoto. I love this dish because you can fold it up. It's super portable. So we oh. take this a lot on our locations and you can use it in the studio. So it's perfect. So I'm gonna shoot with this. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. So let's bring your chin down a millimeter and then look this way. Yeah, look right here. Yeah, there you go. And then big smile, Carlos. <laughs> there you go, perfect. All right, this looks gorgeous. So I'm going to okay, show so you Okay, so it will appear here, Carlos. Okay. Okay. Have the preview. Yeah. Whoa. So the, this dish is really nice. So I have a hair light on him, which I'm actually going to turn down a little bit. Okay. <coughs> so now it's at four something, I think. Yeah. I think that's just a little bit bright on him, and I actually think I don't want it so much on his head. I want it more kind of on his neck. So let's lower it as well. Okay, so oh, it's uh, at four. Should we go at uh, 3.5? Let's do three... Three two. Three two. Mm -hmm. And then you want it lower. Lower, yeah. Okay. So you see that hot spot on his head? Um, I don't really. I think it's a little distracting. So I'm just going to kind of lower the light. Okay. And but I do want to cut him out of the background. That hair light's really going to make a two-dimensional situation turn more three-dimensional. So. Okay. Big smile right here. Let's angle your body again. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so, let's see if it makes a difference. So actually, I think with him, I am going to... Actually, let's just leave it because Randy's going to come back. I'm going to do something different with him in a second, though. Okay. So I want you guys to just look at the front light and what happens. So we had a silver, the silver OCF from Profoto, and now I'm going to switch this, and I am going to put a softbox on it, and I want to show Ooh. you guys the difference. Do you want me to... Yeah, and just lower it a little bit. Okay, just, just <laughs> do the same. So I'm using the 85. 85 millimeter. Okay. Yeah, so that's a great, it's a prime, and that's a great lens if you guys are wanting to do headshots. You cannot go wrong with it, and it's super focused too, so 
Um, it's worth the investment for sure. Okay. okay, let's raise this guy up. Do you want it back in the same position? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Holy <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Probably a little, yeah. This looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to show, so you guys remember that shot, and then so the silver's going to be a little bit more contrasty and just be a little bit, and the soft box is going to be just a really kind of soft, beautiful light, and it definitely has more of a spread to it. When you say the... Uh, that Carus is really coolly photogenic, like it's a. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> we got some crushes True going on. True Look, I've been on here for three days and no one said anything about me. <laughs> You've been here for like two minutes and already. So Mark is asking what is the cost to rent this equipment. So I'm happy to share the cost actually. Like we have a lot of equipment right now. Like uh, yeah, we maybe have a maybe way too much actually. Like yeah. we, what we use, but to rent everything like one full week. It's about uh, one thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, and for three photographers. So I guess if you need to do a photo shoot and rent, uh, let's say, these three lights and stuff, I, I think you can find it under two hundred dollars. I would say for three days. No. Um. It just depends on how many lights you're renting. Um. Uh, yeah. And also what brand you're renting. So uh, pro yeah. photo. And the quality of the. Yeah. Yeah. So the quality is going to cost you. So if you're going to go pro photo, it's definitely um, going to be a little bit more expensive than like bumblebees or something. So. Um, hmm. So you can see in this last photo that we just shot, oh. you can see how much the softbox cuts down on the light. I didn't Whoa, change anything on my cool. settings. We didn't change anything on the light. So you can see oh. how the silver really pushes out a ton of light mm. and how a softbox will With be a the softer same, uh, light. Same power. Same power. I didn't yeah. change anything. I just want to show you all why I was talking about oh. earlier. When the sun is really hot, this is again location. When the sun's really high in the sky, the only lights that can compete with the sun when it's so high is going to be my silver reflectors. This stuff, if I'm trying to compete with the sun with a softbox, forget about it. Like, it's just not going to oh. happen unless the sun is really low in the sky and has lost a lot of its power. So you guys have to think about that, like, what you're competing with and what kind of look you want. Again, this location studio, we're in a controlled setting, so it's a little bit easier. Um, so when you put on a softbox, uh, let's say you went from silver to soft, we're probably going to have to pump this up maybe... It was at 6.1 with silver. And I probably... Or 6.6. I'm going to bring it up to eight. Okay. And I think that might be enough to overcompensate for it. Okay. Perfect. Whoa, look at that look. That was a blue steel. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. So, so yeah, we're talking almost like a stop and a half difference of light being oh pumped out of this yeah. based off the modifier. So you guys have to pay attention to that if you're going to be switching up your modifiers. Um, so you, but you can see that the lighting's very soft. It's, it's so beautiful. so nice with the hair light. Yeah, it like, does. it's really... Yeah, it's very subject. angelic. There's wow. some drama in there. Um, can we pull up the silver one and put it next to the softbox one just so they can see the difference? So it was the... Yeah, this one. So you'll see there's like a little bit more spread going on with the softbox. It's not a huge, huge difference, but it's enough. And also you have to think about the power. So let's say you're shooting with a light like these are 2,400 watts, I think. Let's say you only have lights that are going to be 500 watts. You're going to get a lot more light coming out of there if you're using silver. Mm -hmm. So if you're using low powered lights, you're probably going to want to focus more on silver modifiers if you want mm -hmm. a lot of poppiness because the softbox is going to cut that light down a lot. Yeah, look, the so. silver is, uh, is also adding a lot of reflection on the lips. You can see it's oh, yeah. much softer with the, with the softbox on the lips, all this reflection, the chin. Yeah. Wow. So that was, um, and so that silver modifier, let me show it to you real quick. Do you want to, yeah, you feel good about, uh, do you want to uh, feel a uh, light for the... Add a little fill to it? Yeah? Yeah, okay. What, what would you, why would you do that? It's, uh, so if you all look at this, um, we're talking about a fill. So you see that shadow underneath his chin. Um, if you wanted to fill that in, I personally kind of like the drama of it, but if yeah. you wanted to fill some of that in, we're just going to go ahead and use... You can try it before and after. So. Yeah, we're going to use this white, we used this for the past couple days. This is just a really, really cheap, you can buy it at an art store. It's just a white piece of cardboard foam core. This is what you always want to have on your photo shoots. Okay. And so we're just going to put that right underneath his face and we're going to fill in his neck, that shadow that we see. Okay. 
Look right here. Blue steel. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then so it didn't fill it. Like <laughs> yeah, look at that. Nice. I like that picture. Oh my god, yeah. So with that filled it in just a little yes. bit. I don't want to totally fill it in because then the chin is gonna start blending in with the neck and it's gonna oh, start looking kind of strange. So you just wanna fill it in just a touch. Every and then you can always, if you want a little bit more out of there, you can always maybe do it in post, you can you can lighten it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. But again, I'm trying to do as much in camera as possible. So if you feel like the chin is too dark, just throw one of these white boards in there. And the client can even hold it if you want, so I mean, they can yeah, even go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that much. This is for a headshot. I'm shooting kind of tight. So I don't know how high it was before. <clears throat> but Somewhere here. Yeah. Let's try higher. Tell uh, me. You can go. No, no, it's my camera. It's too high? Yes, yeah, okay. so go a little low, bit lower. Low, low. There you go. Okay, look right here. Perfect. So okay, that should fill it in just a little bit. Yeah, that's oh, nice. nice. Yeah, the chin is down now. It's yeah, lower. so the chin's yeah, yeah. down, and and then also another way you can do this is you can move them a little bit closer to the light, so more light will be bouncing into this. So there's a variety nice. of ways. But Randy's back. He had his makeup done, so I want to quickly show you guys a before and after of him with his makeup now on. So and then we'll come back to you. Okay. So okay. okay. Thank you. So let me bring back the the lights for uh, Randy. And this okay? is on six point six, correct? Uh, okay, let uh, me double yeah. check. It was on 6.6 .6 with the silver. The hair light was at 4. And it was a little bit higher. Like this. So you guys, I'm going back to my silver because we're back to Randy and I just want to show kind of a before and after real quick. So we're going back to our original light settings. Okay. So it's a little bit easier for you to see the difference. Uh, Terry, can can we see the before? So we try to ex to make the same picture with uh, Randy, the last picture of Randy. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is the before. Okay. If you want to. Okay. You know the drill, Chen. There you go. Perfect. Juan is asking if you send Carlos these pictures for his Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know he's gonna want the photos for his Instagram account. So yeah, I'll be sending them to him. Um, is this the last one? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me take one more. I think that ring just needs to be fixed a little bit. Okay, chin this way. Perfect. Beautiful. Stay right there. Gorgeous. Love it. So, um, let's pull up the first one that we shot of him and compare it to the last one. The lighting is probably going to be a little bit yeah. different, but I just want to show you all the makeup that was done. Oh yeah, I need to pump that up, don't I? Um, let me let me make it a little it bit brighter. Yeah. yeah. Pump it up. Yeah, I'm gonna go to seven. Okay, look right here. Shine a little bit more towards me. There you go. Perfect. Beautiful. So that should be a little bit brighter. Yeah. Yeah, and then let's go to the first one that we shot. And so that rim might be a little bit, so the hair light might be a little bit too much on him, so I would move that, but just... Okay, yeah. So you all can see from the left is the before he went into makeup, and the oh. right is after he went to makeup. The same difference. Yeah, and so she kind of fixed some of the, the red skin tone and like evened out his skin and brought down some of the shine. And now again, you can go into post and you can, you know, clear it up even more if you want to. But I just want to show you all what a makeup artist on set does, <laughs> and it will save you a lot of time in post in the end. And then what we spoke about yesterday, is it also makes the person feel, I think, in my opinion, makes them feel a little bit more glamorous and comfortable because someone is kind of taking care of them and nurturing them and putting some makeup on them for something oh, that I can they, tell. I can tell because yeah. I see Randy every day. <laughs> I can tell he's more glamorous on the right. Yeah, he I feels feel. a little bit more beautiful on the right, right? So, and so having a makeup and hair person on set is worth investment. I always usually have one. And if we're shooting a company of 80 people, sometimes they just stand right next to me and they just quickly put some powder on the person and do some quick little touch-ups. Takes them about three minutes. Oh, what is amazing is how the, the light 
reacts. Because yeah. if you look at the, the, the torso here, you know, like, uh, what's the name here? Yeah, the neck? The, the neck. The décolleté or something the, like that. Yeah, the décolleté. <laughs> if you look at the décolleté, you see it's more or less the same. Mm -hmm. You need, But the face is really like, uh, because it's not reflecting the light. So, so yeah, what, uh, maybe we should ask her what she, what she did. Yeah, let's go grab her. Either! <laughs> Let me see here, let me so just make sure. Brandon, yes. I have you tilt your head up ever so slightly so we get a little more cat slap your eyes. You see on the left, you have a little white dot in your eyes, which is oh, what, right, right, right. what yes. we want. Yeah, it's hard for me to see it. So that so he brings up a great point. You guys want a catch light. So a catch light is a little white dot that you see in people's eyes and photos. If you lose that catch light, then the eyes look like they're dead. So there's, um, I would have him lift up his chin, or if that still didn't work, I would lower the light a little bit so we can get that catch light in his eyes. So, either, yeah, if you can explain what you, what you did. So, Heather, you're going to look. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, this is my girlfriend, Heather. We used to work together in LA. She's a makeup artist. Hello. And Hi. you're going to look right here at this okay. guy. What? Well, let me explain. I have to look at you. <laughs> so, what I did is we used kind of like a tinted moisturizer to take out some of the red with a little bit of um, concealer. Um, then I used a silicone-based powder finish on his full face. We trimmed the eyebrows, we trimmed the beard a little, and we got rid of all the loose um, hairs. Wow, and you trimmed the beard. A little uh -huh. bit, yeah, right around. Wow. I know. Just all amazing. these details. It's yeah, insane. I mean, it's there's more to it than it looks, you know? Let me see. Yeah, but we're seeing, like, it's, it's insane the difference, the, the lights. Reacts yeah. on the skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks good. Huh? That does. Oh, back that up. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's from the original. Is that the? Where's the original? Can you put the before and after up again? Yeah. You yeah. See? So you oh, see the yeah, left? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it looks it looks really good. Yeah. It's much and better. Less work for you. Yeah. And post. Mm -hmm. right? Excellent. Yeah, so this will save you guys money. So you put the investment in. I don't know how makeup artists, you know, their Can rates are all. In me. Yeah, put it in her. <laughs> um, the rates are all different depending on what state you're in. But if you um, have, let's say, like a bunch of headshots, like maybe 15, 20, or, you know, even if you're down to like three headshots, it's worth it to invest in the makeup artist because it will save you time in post, and time is money. So it ends up being better if you just have someone on set. So. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to continue to work. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Lee. Okay. So you wanted to try something? Uh, no, I think we're done. I just wanted to show the before and after. But oh, I, let me do the catch light real quick. So yeah. let's see, see here. How it yeah. Works. So Terry's correct. We need a catch light in there. So um, I'm just going to lower this light just a touch, just a little bit. Okay. Let me know if you want to when you look at in your okay. camera if you want it lower. Okay. And then bring your chin down just a millimeter. Perfect. And then just big smile right there. Beautiful. So I think there we're going to get a catch light. And then maybe we can show a before and after of what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I want to catch the light. <laughs> Make sure you got it. So Come just show you a before and after of this catch light that we're talking about. So on the oh left, God, you'll yeah. see the, uh, I mean, he is opening his eyes more in the second one, but you'll see on the left, there's absolutely no light in there whatsoever, especially if you're getting closer, you'll see that the eyes are kind of dead. And on the right, we have that catch light. And that was just simply a little tweak of the lighting. I just lowered the lighting a little bit. So, and that's all you got to do. Cause you don't really want them to like lift up their chin. So you have a catch light. Cause that looks weird. So just lower your light. So, Great. okay. I'll take a dozen. <laughs> Gloss it right? All right, perfect. So I cool. think we're, yeah, thanks so much for participating. Hi, yeah. Absolutely. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. All right, so we're going to bring Carlos back in. And Randy, can you call uh, Carlos? Yes. Thanks. And I really want Carlos to have a black t shirt. Do we have an extra black t shirt? Uh, we can ask. Yeah. That way. Uh, you want to try with something dark? Yeah, something dark. Uh, Sam? Do we have also uh, something dark for uh, Carlos? Did you find a black t-shirt by any chance? Is <laughs> oh. are we gonna shoot him up? No, we can shoot it inside out. You wanna shoot oh. you want to turn the shirt inside out? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, we have an XD shirt, which is black. But that's okay, we'll do it in a second. Come back, come okay. over here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so Carlos is back. So let's bring you back over there. So I showed you all um, what happened with the silver reflector, and then we used a soft box. And now I am going to use one of my favorite modifiers. Oh, where's my, where's my magnum? Is my magnum over there? This one? No, it's 
silver magnet. This one has a grid on it, which is kind of a pain in the butt to put in, so I want to keep the grid. Oh, oh, no, oh no, we must be using, I guess. No, no, we have there it. we go. Yeah, we have like all of the magnets from Sony's. There we go. Want to try this one? Yeah, that's perfect. So this is a magnet I showed you guys earlier. This is what we use on weddings for the wedding party if it's earlier on in the day. These things are awesome. Not a lot of people use magnums. I have no idea why. I think because it's a little bit difficult to maybe use sometimes. So, but I love them. Um, so let's take this guy off. And you'll see that it's really, where's the, okay, you'll see that it's really deep. So the light is gonna be super, pretty contrasting. It's really gonna carve around his body because it's such a deep dish. The more shallow it is and the more wide it is, the light is going to be more spread out. So you have to look at not only if it's silver or white, but you also have to look to see how wide it is and how deep it is, because that's going to change your lighting too. So. I know you're gonna want these images. I do, <laughs> <laughs> especially the last two that I took. Yeah, I like, definitely oh, I want, want those. <laughs> Uh, go a little bit higher. Okay. Okay, so we're at 7.0 <coughs> right now. Um, this is probably going to come out pretty bright compared to that, sil that silver beauty dish that we were using because this is a really strong, strong modifier. So I'm just going to take the picture <coughs> just so you guys can see how strong this is going to come out. Okay, let's angle your body again. Perfect, beautiful. So you'll see that this is gonna be blown out because I did not change my... Oh, so yeah. you can see how much light is coming out of this Magnum compared to the soft box <laughs> and compared to this, even though this is silver too, this is super wide and it's really shallow. So there's not gonna be a ton of light pumping out of this compared to the Magnum. This is why we use Magnums when the sun uh, is so strong. Between the sun, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, our, our <coughs> B1s yeah. are only 500 watts and look how, look how much this is pumping out. So, okay, so I'm just gonna cut down on this power. So we're probably gonna have to go down almost two stops completely. Two stops, okay. Just so from seven to five? I mean, where were you? Yeah, so we went from seven to five. Wow, okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah, so that's, so we're talking almost two stops. Now the exposure should be almost perfect. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, so we're so talking good. almost two stops of a difference right there. Um, and then I'm gonna show you real quick if you wanna put on a grid, it's called a honeycomb. So it's one of these little guys. I don't know if you guys can see this close up. Should I go right here? Yeah, you can go so, very close maybe. To me. Yeah, yeah. so honeycomb. it's a little honeycomb. And that's gonna cut down on your light too and give you a little bit more focus. Let's say there's just too much light like happening on his whole body and you wanna narrow that down a little bit. <laughs> put, the, put, this, <laughs> put this honeycomb on. So I'll show you guys the difference real quick. Now those honeycombs, are, they're kind of pricey and they're it's super okay. fragile. It's okay, magazine we're done here. Yeah. So we're going from a silver magnum to a silver magnum with a honeycomb on it. Perfect. <coughs> okay. 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 And then look right here. And one more. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that kind of, the light's going to get a lot more focused wow. and a lot more spotty. So... Wow, it looks like cinema. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, these sil so these silver magnums are amazing. I love them. They give a lot of pop. They give a lot of power. And if it's too much and you want it to be a little bit more focused and dramatic, you just throw a honeycomb in there. So the honeycombs run, I think they're, they're expensive. They're like 400 bucks, 350 bucks. So you keep... Keep the track of them. Yeah, the oh honeycomb. Yeah, <laughs> everything in photography, if it's under four hundred dollars, you got a deal. So, um, so yeah, so that's a honeycomb. And then I will show you guys. Do you guys want to see an umbrella or a white beauty dish? The difference. Did we work with the white beauty dish already? No, no? I guess I'll just show the white beauty dish real quick. <clears throat> this one. Yeah. So this is a white beauty dish. This is also really popular. This is a hard one. Um, 
So these are these are nice. I mean, I don't use white a ton, but if I did, I would probably invest in a white beauty dish versus a white umbrella. You're gonna get a little bit more um, control with a beauty dish versus an umbrella. So let's put that guy on. Okay. So I had to bring down the power quite a bit because we had the silver on, and you're gonna see if I do not change the power at all with a white beauty dish, it's probably going to be a little bit too low. So because there's not as much light pumping out of it. Yeah. Okay. And because this is shallow, you're gonna have more light spread on them too. <clears throat> Yeah, so you're going to see, again, the difference between silver and white. I did not change anything, and look how dark wow. that is, yeah. right? So I just want to really kind of point out that difference. If you guys want more light and your, your watts is only 400 or 500, 250, I would invest in silver over white. So, um, but it is kind of a different look. And he can handle, his skin can handle silver. If you're shooting someone who's a little bit older and they, you know, you don't want to show all the wrinkles and all that stuff, you probably want to use a softer, whiter light source. Mm. Um, so you're gonna use a soft box or an umbrella. So silver, it's, it's kind of a tricky modifier to use, but it's beautiful if the person can handle it. So, okay. Um, are there any questions? Cause now I'm gonna show you all how to go from a gray background to a white background or a black background so you don't have to invest in three different backgrounds if you need three different looks in like, let's say 20 minutes. So. Oh, but with the same background? With the same background. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because I figure people, because backgrounds are expensive. I mean, these guys are what, were a hundred bucks? The big ones, yeah. Yeah, so the big ones are like a hundred bucks. The smaller ones are like sixty-five dollars. And sometimes you're going to go into an assignment, and they're going to, you're, especially if you get into like, let's say you get into celebrity work, you have twenty minutes. Sometimes not even that. You have five minutes to shoot these people, and the magazine wants three different, very different looks. And you're not going to have time to bring down your seamless backdrop and switch backdrops. So, um, okay, it looks like there's no more questions for the lighting. So he's asking, will you move the subject? Or, uh, yeah, we can move the seat. subject. So that's easier than actually moving the light. So actually, let's do that. I'm going to go back to my silver magnum and I'm going to show you guys that real quick. So. Do you want the one with the honeycomb which, grid? Or? Which one did you like? You like the the drama one with the honeycomb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I want like honeycomb? That. I want okay. the cinema one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we'll do that. The one for Hollywood. Yeah. Because he has a he has a, some uh, castings, you know, next week. Yeah, I think yeah. this could be like a second gig for you for sure. Or well, hey, I'm gig. open for it. Yeah, right. That'd be fun. You can travel around and hang out with hot girls. So okay, let's put this on you a little bit more. Okay. okay. So let me just make sure the light is okay. Perfect. Oh, whoa! Look at that. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so this honeycomb is a little bit too tight. Let me um let's actually switch. Let's take the honeycomb oh, honeycomb. Let's switch it to for this one. Okay. But yeah, let's just do regular magnet. Okay, so I'm shooting them with a silver magnum, no honeycomb. The honeycomb is a little <coughs> bit tricky. It's such a tight, oh, yeah. such a such a spotlight, but it, it's really pretty, but it's not going to be good for some of the examples I want to show you. So I went back to the silver magnum without the honeycomb. Um, okay, okay chill a little bit this way. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see the light hit him, hit him on his, hitting him on his face. Um, I can always bring him, let's see here. I can always bring him a little bit closer to the light. Let's say that's not enough light on his face. Instead of moving the entire light, you just have him go a little bit closer to the light. So let's have you step a little bit this way. Not that much, go back a little bit. And then angle again. Yeah, and then look right here, chin this way. Perfect. Beautiful. And I'm actually gonna, let's bring that um, fill in real okay. fast. <coughs> Yeah, this looks great. Okay, hold on to that. So I just want to kind of bring in that shadow a little bit. It's a little bit too dark on his neck, so I'm going to put in that. There you go. 
And then I'm going to show you the difference between hit what happens to his face when he's facing the light versus facing away from the light. So let's actually have you look out that way okay. and then chin this way. Look at me right here. Perfect. Bring that chin down a millimeter. There you go. Beautiful. And let's see here. So, so can we pull up side by side these two? Oh, yeah, it's very different. It is. So whenever I'm doing headshots or whenever I'm doing portraits of people, I will have them move, I'll have them face towards the light and then have them face away from the light. So the one on the left is what you call short lighting, where his face is a little bit less lit, he's facing towards the light and there's less, there's going to be less light hitting his face, but when he faces away from the light, it's a little backwards, but on the right, more of his face is being lit up by the actual modifier by the actual light and so there's more of his face that's lit. So what happens is people tend to look a little bit more broad and a little bit bigger when they're doing broad lighting. And they'll look slimmer and they'll look skinnier like the one on the left when they're doing short lighting. So subconsciously most people will light their face better in what you call short lighting. So that's the one on the left. Um, I don't know what you all like, if you guys like the left or the right better. I personally like the left better. Um, it's completely different expression. Yeah, yeah. completely yeah. different expressions. On the right, you look almost like a, a warrior. See what I mean? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I kind of like, like the, you the know, right side. It's like strong, you know? And um, and left if is you more genuine, more... Yeah. yeah. If I really wanted to kind of show more of a difference, I can... Let me put the light a little bit more to the side so you guys can really see what I'm talking yeah, about with the more. short versus the, the broad lighting. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's move it kind of... Yeah, definitely more kind of like this. Here? Uh, yeah, and this one just moves more. Yeah. Okay. Probably a little bit more. Let's get some drama going on. Mm -hmm. Do something very dramatic. Yeah, a little bit more drama. CSI. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then just a touch. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, let's do this way first, uh, face towards the light. Yeah. Bring your chin down a little bit? Yeah, they okay. say on the right it was like a little bit more serious. That's the feeling they have. Yeah. Okay, and then let's face the other way. And then chin towards me. Perfect. Beautiful. This might be a little too dramatic, but I just kind of want to show you the difference between okay. broad lighting and short lighting. Can you do a side by side here? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So just by changing them, changing their body, you have very different kinds of situations going on here. So, um, you know, very different kinds of looks and feelings. So you don't exactly have to be moving your lights all around and be jumping into the set. You can just move the person back and forth. I think there was a question about that earlier. Do you move the model? And this is what you can do. You can have them facing towards the light. You can have them facing away from the light and it'll create very different kinds of looks. So, um, okay. I want to show you all real quick how to get, because at what time is it? It's uh, 12. So it's the top of the hour. Top, top of the hour. Okay. I'm going to show you all how to do a, um, a black background real quick. And it's so easy. You guys are going to laugh. So let's cut this light. <laughs> this guy right here. So we're just going to turn it off. So we had a light on the background that was showing the gray backdrop, which is why we had that gray back there. I'm going to have him turn off this light. And the backdrop should go pretty pretty black. We're kind of in a smaller studio, so it's a little bit a little bit more difficult, but let's see what, how this looks. Okay. You want to feel? Uh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So the background's going to go pretty dark because we took off that background light. And this mainly is going to happen Ooh. when you have a gray because a gray is in between black and white so if you want a white you can make a white by having like a light really bright on the background and that will turn it to white oh, yeah. if you want it to go black you just turn off the background light and it'll I'll start to go darker without this one okay you see it's spilling 
Oh, okay. And then, um, <clears throat> and if you want the gray, then you're just going to throw a light on the background. So this won't work if you get a white background, really, unless, yeah, just, and, and it won't work if you have a black background. So you're going to want to choose a medium gray, and then you can change it to black, and you can change the white. Now, this is actually not even completely black. So what I would do is I'd have pull them off of the back a little bit more. Mm. And then that way, they're, because what's happening is this light is spilling on my background, this key light. So I'd have to pull more off the background so there's more difference between him and the background so that light won't hit him. So I have a little bit more room, so let's see if that works. You want to try? Mm -hmm. Go back to the, the light too? Uh, yeah, so the light needs to back up as well. Okay. So we're just going to pull him away from the background a little bit. And hopefully that light won't be spilling so much on my background. It'll go darker. Okay, let's have you step closer. Okay. Let right here. Let's angle your body again. Yep, perfect. Okay, beautiful. Stay right there. Mm, it's still hitting that background. Yeah, it's still hitting it. Let's see here. Let me turn this as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, so face forward. So, so this is where you run into difficulties using the Magnum because the Magnum has so much power that it's <laughs> falling on my background. If I was using a softbox, this probably wouldn't be as much of an issue. But I really want to stick to my Magnum because it's just, it's, I, I just love it. Um, so... I'm gonna really try to fix this with the magnet, but otherwise you can maybe move to a soft box so it's not gonna have so much light coming out of it. So, all right, look right here. Perfect. Okay, so you can see that the background does get darker. It doesn't get completely black, but you definitely have a darker background to work with. Um, you can also maybe change that a little bit in post, even though that's not what I would really do, but if you guys wanna do that, if you have to get black, then you can do that. Yeah, or, yeah, right, because it's like spilling so much. But I really, he has such a bright sweater, I don't. Tilt it and we'll raise it up because you got some more ceiling if that stand will go higher. Okay, yeah, so let's raise that up. And then I think I can also put that grid on it too. The honeycomb? Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think you can get by without the honeycomb. Because what, you know, got to remember, light is directional. So it's it, if it's pointed down, we won't see it. Then it'll the like background. slide off the backdrop right. a little bit. Good thing we have high ceilings. Yeah. So does that look like it's kind of on you? That's, that should make a difference. Just try that. <clears throat> okay, so that does look darker. So if you guys have high ceilings, you can definitely, you yeah, you can definitely raise that light up and point it down. So, but if you don't have high ceilings, then you know, you can put like a little modifier on it, you can change your modifier, you can, you know, maybe put a grid on it so it's more directional. So these are all just quick little fixes. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to brighten up the backdrop. Let's say we want to go to more of a white. So I'm going to actually push you back towards the backdrop. Just a little bit. So let's go right here. <clears throat> and we're going to put this light back on. Uh, let's see here. Make it more slow. Bring that light closer. So I'm turning up the background light, so it's going to be a little bit brighter than it was before. Okay, we're going to fix this rim light because we moved this, so we're going to bring that back on him. Usually I would use a light meter to kind of test all this kind of stuff, but I don't have my light meter with me, so we're just going to test it in the camera. So hopefully this is going to be enough to make a, white, a wider backdrop. We're just going to do a quick little test shot. Okay, let me move that light. Oh. Yeah. And I actually maybe use like an umbrella or something, but let's just leave that and kind of work. Right side, so I look right here. Perfect. Say just like that. 
Beautiful. And then actually, let's push you back just a little bit more. And then let's move that light a little. So I'm pushing it back towards the background so some of this light will end up spilling on the background. So I'm just gonna push them a little bit closer to the backdrop. Because now I have a light on the background plus this light is gonna spill on the background too, making it a little bit brighter. Yann is asking, how do you get the ring light, the white light outline? The which one? Show the technique, a white light outline or something. So maybe oh, the, the rim light, the, the, the yeah. one that's on the side of his face. Um, so that's what you call, people call it different things. I call it a hair light. Some people call it a rim light. Um, so you just kind of put that at a 45 degree angle, like right behind the subject. So just like right here. And that's going to cut them out of the background. So. Just um, just as a test, turn off your main light or, or don't shoot it just so yeah, they can see what the room does. Yeah, and then just do the background light. Yeah, so they can see what the room does. Yeah, I was going to show you guys that. So a lot of times you can do it in layers. So you can do like your ambient testing and then you do your... I was just afraid we were running out of time. Okay, but just, oh, you can do the... No, just turn it off. Yeah, just turn it completely off. All right. So now we're going to look at just... And let's turn that one off too. Oh, okay. So now we're just going to test out the background light just to see how much light is hitting the background. So the main light's not going to go off and the rim light's not going to go off. So can you do this? Sorry. So you okay. can see that it's kind of still a little you bit. still the hair light, sorry. If you want to do one more. Oh, that's okay. It feels like... I'm just a little afraid on time. So let me turn this up a little bit. So we were at 6.2. I'm going to go up to about 7, 6.9. see okay so I'm using a magnum so it's gonna be a little bit directional but I like that uh, so it's not gonna be a pure white Ooh. but I do like that so you start to see that a little bit of that spot let's now turn on the hair light so now we're gonna add layers to this and let's turn off the background light okay. I'm gonna show you guys what the rim light is doing or if you want to call it a hair light Perfect. so You'll see that it's kind of just cutting them out of the background a little bit. Um, and so those are really nice because it makes it so that a two-dimensional photo kind of starts looking a little bit more three-dimensional. So I usually have three lights. It's like a three-point lighting system. You have your main light, you have your fill or your background light, and then you have your hair light and your rim light. So three lights is really kind of the way to go. You can really start carving people out of the background. So you can see what the hair light or the rim light is doing right now. Um, so let's put the background light on. So I'm going to show you guys the background light and the rim light at the same time. So no, no main light, no key light. Okay. Perfect. Like that. Okay. So now we have the two lights going on and now I'm going to put in my key light. So now we have all three <coughs> lights happening at once here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so and now we have the key, we have the key light on. And look at Whoa. that look. Carlos has a full modeling career about <laughs> to happen. We're creating his portfolio as we speak. So. And now we add the fill. Yeah. So we didn't have a fill on this one. So now we're gonna add the fill. You guys will see that dark shadow under his neck, and now let's see how it fills up. Perfect. Beautiful. It didn't actually fill up that much. That's good. I actually almost need to bounce a light into this, I think. Yeah, we probably need a fourth light. Um, oh, because it's too high? Or do we need to? It's a little, it's a little high, and... Do we lower this light, maybe? Yeah, we can lower it. I kind of like where it's at. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, if we have time, we can whip out a fourth light and bounce it into that. Or if, do we have a silver reflector? Like a, a silver... So you'll, we're looking at the shadow, and this is not strong enough for Carlos. So you can pull out a silver reflector, like a bounce reflector. Um, I'm not sure if we have one. But if you run into a situation like this, if you have one, just pull out the silver versus the white. And you can, um, it'll, it'll bounce more light back into his neck. So, but I don't think we have one here on set. 
Um, or you can whip out a fourth light and you can bounce the fourth light into the white board. So why would you put the fourth light? <coughs> Yeah, I would nice, yeah right? I would probably bounce it, or I would make it really really soft oh, and bounce and kind of bounce it like right here with a soft box on it or something. Awesome. Just you know, I don't actually really mind it on him in this photo, um, but those are some of the ways you can help. Kind of some people are different. Some people have a really deep shadow on their mm -hmm. neck, and you're gonna have to bounce bounce a lot of fill in there. And then some people you don't see it at all. So okay, okay. are there any questions? Yeah. So it's all, almost time to transition to Terry. So. You want to take extra shots, or you feel a... Do what? You want to take some extra shots, or you feel good? Extra shots? Yeah, I want to do something kind of... Um, I want to do split lighting on him real quick. So let's kill that background. So split lighting is where the light is right here, and then there's no light on the other side. I'll keep the room though. And then split lighting is literally what it is. You're going to split the face kind of in half. Oh. So let's take these out. I think he'll look really cool on kind of split lighting. It looks cool in all situations. <laughs> it's okay. too easy. And then let's move this kind of this way. Oh, like on the side? Yeah, kind of like right on the side. And then we can just... Um, Even more, no? Yeah, we, well, we can just push We don't need this one. Right? And we can always just move it forward. Okay, so Carlos, let's actually move you forward. <clears throat> and then let's have the magnum ready with the grip. So now we're just playing around. I just want to show you guys a couple different things. Um, okay, look right here then. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is split lighting, it's kind of running into Rembrandt lighting, if you guys know Rembrandt. So oh, wow. Rembrandt's a painter and he always kind of had like this triangle on a lot of his paintings. Clear obscure. Huh? Clear obscure. That's the technique. That's it. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Yeah, so this is, so this is a light really... Light and dark. This is really light and dark. This is a really beautiful light. It's very dramatic. They have a little bit of spill and you see that little triangle oh, right there? Cool. Um, and so this is just, usually it's more at a 45 degree angle, but on this one it's more kind of half. So I'm putting it like right next to him this way. And then I still have that hair light on the back, so that bounces off the background. Let's kill that hair light and you'll guys see that suddenly it turns into more of a two-dimensional photo. Maybe you'll like it better, but I like it with that hair light. So, okay, go back again. Perfect. So now you'll see if you want to kill that hair light, the difference between having a rim light and then not having Ooh. a rim light. So so that's kind of a personal preference. Um, that's not full rim bright because it's not the triangle completely closed off, but, um, and then I'm gonna point in the other direction and show you the guys the difference. Let's have you face this direction. And then let's go this way a little bit. No, just take a step this way. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful, look at that. Gorgeous. And so this is more of a split lighting. Because um, now he's facing the other direction, so the light's just hitting half of his face. And so oh. that's split lighting, which is what I want to show you all. Okay. So, okay? And so it's literally like the face is split, like right in half. So, and so you can get a lot of different kinds of lighting looks and techniques just by moving the model around versus moving your lights all around. Do you asking so. what are your settings when you shoot in split lighting? Um, my setting is at 1 60th, at seven, my f-stop is 7.1, and I'm at ISO 100. Oh. So. Yeah. Um, and then let's actually put the rim on this one. I just want to do split lighting with the rim. Okay. Yeah, I like all of them, right? Yeah, not all of them. Stop taking the meat. Yeah, these are cool. These are definitely your portfolio for sure. Okay, chin this way. Beautiful. Chin a little bit more this way. Yeah, perfect. Stay right there. And chin up just a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so now I put that hair light back in just to kind of pop him out just a little bit. Um, yeah, so you got split lighting with a little bit of rim on there. So you guys can do a bunch of different things just really quickly. This took a little bit longer just because I'm showing you everything, but that could take maybe about 10 minutes. You have three different background colors, you have a bunch of different looks, and then, you know, it's like a 10 minute shoot and you have a variety of stuff that you can do just using the same background, three lights, you got your little fill right here, and then that's it. Awesome. So, okay.
Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, you like the features, Thank you, guys. Yeah. I like them all. Yeah, <laughs> You right? them all, huh? I want to know what everybody, what everybody else thinks. Yeah, what do you guys yeah. think? What do you like of Carlos? Which ones were some of your favorites? I like this one a lot of you. I and love the, that one. Yeah. I love that one. You gotta find me on Facebook so we can film fun stuff. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Here, I'll give you all my cards. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they love it. You see. I might need to bring her with me when I have my my house music party since I'm a, I'm a DJ. Oh, you're a DJ? Yeah, I'm a house oh, music Oh, here you DJ. go. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Huh? Look at that. You should do that. Yeah. I DJ the uh, the Pride party here in June. Oh, the Pride yeah. happy hour outside my patio. Oh, you did? I did that outside. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is it like house music? Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. All right, you all. Well, Carlos is going to take off, and um, if you have any questions, I'm going to roll on over by Terry, and you guys can ask questions over there. He says you got a modeling career ahead. Thank you, Wani. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. All right, okay. cool beans. Thanks, Ma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we take care of this. Thank you, Terry. That's yes, you. Let's get back to Terry White. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good I need to bring over. you on set with me. You totally caught me on that whole light. You're so right. It was spilling on the I background. was just being an assistant. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. All. I like that. You could be my assistant. I want you to come on my shoots with me. You know your thing. I have taken a few pictures here and there. <laughs> all right. So, we're back. <clears throat> and, of course, this is the... Uh, quick post-processing se section of the day for um, for Marla. <clears throat> we tethered um, into Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic CC, and of course um, she shot in RAW. We have uh, the 42 images that you just captured, and what we're going to do now is get those into Lightroom CC, which they already are, but we're going to get them in in their high-res RAW format. So because we tethered and also tethered into a collection, um, oops, sorry, wrong one. Marla Day 3, there we go. They're in that collection, which was also synced to Lightroom Mobile, so or, or Lightroom CC. So if I go up to uh, Lightroom CC and I come down to that same uh, Day 3 portraits, there they all are. But the problem here is that they are in smart, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. They're in smart preview only, which means that they're good, they're just smaller than the original raw file. So what we want to do, add photos, browse, go to Marla Day 3, which again, the raw files were captured from Lightroom Classic CC via tethering right on the hard drive, review, they're all selected, they're going to add them to the same album, add 42 photos, and away we go. So now if we go to that album, it will um, begin the process of syncing those, um, what I want to do, I want to do the square grid, there we go. It'll do the process of syncing those photos um, and backing them up, which is the big thing. We talked about backup on weddings and, and while you're shooting to the second card, but it's also important to backup once you get to your computer as well. So it's backing those up to the cloud and replacing the smart previews now with the uh, full resolution original file on the hard drive and the original file has been backed up. So if something happened, your hard drive crashed, computer got lost, stolen, whatever, you'd be able to pull down those raw files from the cloud. And that's why I like to do that as opposed to the smart previews. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we, we don't have to wait for that. We can let that just keep going in the background and um, I already have a couple of things I want to do with yeah, each one, but you tell me where you want to go. Um, I guess I was just going to show we have bit. We have Randy and we have Carlos, so let's, let's start with uh, Randy. I mean, I guess we could just do a little bit of retouching. Yeah. Um, do you have one in mind that you want to start with? 
really no maybe the second maybe the second one of Randy after the makeup. Uh, after the makeup, so yeah. that would be this one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can process that and then just do it in <coughs> additional touch-ups. Got it. So again, we're going to do the things we always do. So we're going to head over to the uh, editing settings here in Lightroom CC. First thing I'd like to do is go ahead and enable that camera profile. Um, yeah, no, there. I wonder if it's just not detecting your camera. No, you got it. It's just not that much distortion in that lens. That's great. Yeah. So there's nothing really to correct there, but depending on the lens, it can make a <coughs> it can make a bigger difference. That one looks really dark, though. So maybe the third one's better. Let's see. Uh, another one with no catch light. All right. <laughs> that's the one with plenty catch lights. Well, that's okay. We can just make it. Brighter. Yeah, we can make it brighter. Yeah. Okay. Hang on for a second. <coughs> All right, there we go. All right, let me get that out of my throat. All right, so let's go in and let's um, make that a little bit brighter. Now, I haven't done this before. Well, I haven't done this on, on the last few days because, I don't know, just didn't think of do it, doing it. But there is an auto button, and it has been there for years in both Camera Raw and um, Lightroom. And sometimes, if you just don't know what to adjust, Sometimes just pressing auto to see what happens, and if you don't like it, you can always undo it or adjust it from there. So if I click auto, I don't like what happened. It made it too bright, but it also fixed some of the other things. Like, so for example, it adjusted several of these sliders. The only thing I don't like about it is it just overexposed it. Let's bring that back down, and if I like that, then I would just keep going. But I tend to work with the sliders directly on my own, but just giving you throwing that option out there um, sometimes it's okay to start with auto and tweak from there versus starting from scratch and tweaking from there. So if we undo and go back, then we can always go from scratch and just maybe bump up the exposure, I would say about at least that much, mm -hmm. you tell me. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, and of course, he's got that nice vibrant blue shirt on. Um, we could, for example, maybe pull some of the detail out of that with the shadow slider. Again, that's too much, that's too little. So maybe something right around there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, the makeup did a great job. We don't really have any any significant hot spots uh, to deal with. I do see a couple of imperfections that we all have that we might take care of. Um, again, I'm just looking for things that I would do in Lightroom first before heading over to Photoshop. All right, so uh, the white balance looks good, but sometimes, since, especially since you shot on a nice neutral gray, we could go in and uh, test the white balance and see if we like it better by sampling what would be, you know, what would be correct white balance. So the problem with correct white balance when you're dealing with people is that it tends to cool them off more than you probably want. You want warmer skin tones. And what that did was it it made the background gray like it's supposed to be. But it also took a lot of that warm skin tone out off of him as mm -hmm. well. So what I'll sometimes do is just go ahead and get the proper white balance, which is what I just did, and then readjust the uh, temperature to warm up the skin tones a bit. So, because um, the background is not as important as the subject. The subject is the, the, the main reason that you're shooting this. So if we go with the temperature, we might just pull that over just a bit. Now again, we can go too far, too little. I would say almost back to where we were, but right about there. Maybe a little bit more. And of course your monitor is gonna look different looking at what you guys are seeing, and that's about right. Okay. Um, so let me go back on the shadows a bit. That's good. And again, just a tad bit of vibrance. All right. Can you bring your monitor down just a touch? Sure. I need some reflection. Try. I don't know if I can get it straight up and down, but up. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> Unless we put something under it. Yeah, no worries. All right. So um, from there, if I want to now go in and just take care of some of those anomalies that I was talking about, just that we all have, then I could go into Photoshop and take care of it from here. So let's do that. Uh, we've got that image selected. Let's go ahead and, as a matter of fact, mark it as a pick and give it a five star rating so we know which one it is. And um, we'll go in and say edit in Photoshop. 
Now, I saw someone ask the question earlier about um, reflection, reflections and glasses, and you've been doing a fantastic job just with the shooting and lighting, so we haven't really had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. He's got a slight one in that right eye just at the very top. But for the most part, his, his reflections just aren't an, an issue in his glasses. But if I were being me, and I am me, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to say that that one reflection is probably going to bother me the most. I okay, just want to make sure I'm there. And it's this one right here. So like I said, very minor. Sometimes, it, when it, especially when it bleeds down into the eye, that's when it really becomes hard to, hard to fix. This one is really easy. It's not even touching the rim of the glasses. That makes it even easier. So we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate the layer so we can see our before and after. And we'll take our patch tool. <clears throat> Make sure our patch tool, you got a choice between normal and content aware. We're gonna keep it on normal for this because we want it to blend in better. And using my Wacom stylus here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a quick selection around that reflection. And then we'll just pull it over to an area that doesn't have it. And away it goes. Mm. Tone it down a little bit more here, too. And there we go. So, just to clean that up just a bit. And over here, not an issue. Oh, and I can see a little bit of reflection right here. Not enough to bother me, but while we're at it, take that one out, too. All right. Now, while we're here, while we're zooming in on the eyes, we, of course, would look at anything else in this area and see if there's anything else we want to take care of. So, for example, um, I can see just a few stray hairs here on the eyebrows. So just trim those a bit. Just some red tones here in the skin we don't need, an extra line we don't need there. Again, toning, trimming some of these eyebrows. <coughs> All right. Now, I don't know, what is that? Is that a mole or a pimple? Uh, let me see, take the little circle off of it. Yep. Would you keep that? Or do you want that? Going? I would keep that, but okay. I would get rid of the stuff on the side. The, the stuff here. Yeah. All right. And then definitely the ones kind of where there's some contrast because it's sticking out. Yep, right here. Mm -hmm. So that's, and again, lighting is lighting. So anything that's raised on your skin becomes more pronounced by shadows. Mm -hmm. So that, depending on where the light is, we might not have ever seen that, but because of that being the hair light and coming back into the cameras almost, it's creating a shadow towards us and we wanna take care of that. So just, again, removing some of this, smoothing mm -hmm. some of this out so that we don't see it. Now, I have a thing about necklines, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that's just my personal pet peeve. I would diminish them. Yeah, okay, good. I completely remove them, honestly. Do you really? Yeah, because no one misses them. Like, you'll miss wrinkles, you'll miss, like, things under your eyes, but I have yet to say, someone say, what happened to my neckline? <laughs> like, but doesn't uh, that look weird when it's no, completely smooth? No, I, I, I completely smooth it out, but we'll, we'll diminish it since it's your shot. But, yeah, I they're gone. And it's just because it's always been one of my pet peeves. All right, so let's go in and let's show how we'll diminish it. We'll use the same trick we used yesterday. So we'll completely get rid of it temporarily. And then we'll dial it back in to just keep some of it. All right, so let's just completely, again. See, I don't think that's bad. But anyway, it, oh. no, 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 we'll dial it back in. Okay. Just to see. Okay. All right, so let's go to, now while it's still selected, we have the ability to go up to edit and fade patch selection. So again, this is all of it being back, and you can dial in or dial down as much of it as you want to yeah, keep. Yeah, just and a little I think bit that's, like that. Yeah, that's like natural. That. Yep. Just, just a little touch. Just a little bit, just okay, little, I'm fine with that. A little touch of a neck wrinkle there. Yep, all right, so that was just reducing it by like 50%. Same thing with this one maybe. Just so the shadow of it is just not so pronounced. And if I can get away with all of this at once, I would consider myself lucky. I don't think I can, because there's just nowhere to drag it. Let's see. Maybe. Mm. All right, maybe. Maybe I can get away with that. Sometimes the area is just too big, you gotta do it in multiple steps. So same thing, if we bring it all the way back, that's all of it, or we can diminish it by like half. 
or mm. more or less? No, go more. Uh, diminish it a little bit more. So go, I mean, go the other way. This way? Yeah. So like that. All right, Just cool. a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can live with that. Okay. I'm happy. All right, good. So I would also um, burn down his neck a little bit, bring down the how bright it is. Okay. So darken it a little bit. And then another thing I like to do, um, or give directions to my retouching team, is to even out the skin tone. So his face is a little bit more red than his neck and some parts of his chin, which are a little bit more yellow. So I'd even those out. Okay. Yeah. So I, and, and so taking that direction, I would also think about what order of those things I want. So I want to give her what she wants, but Maybe not in the order she said it. So like I usually do my dodging and burning at the end versus right now. And then we would go ahead and so we take care of the skin first okay. and then do the dodging and burning after. Yeah. So I don't, um, if you guys were with me the past couple of days, I don't do my own retouching. I send out my work. So I do give them directions. So I'm not totally, uh, I don't really know what, what order to put stuff in, but I do always tell my retouchers to even out the skin tones, diminish the lines and the wrinkles, diminish, not take away the lines and the wrinkles completely. And then I also have them um, take away any kind of blemishes so, now, and hair flyaways. Yeah. Taking away the red, it, it's multiple ways to do it. We can do it. With no, I take out the yellow. Say, oh, the yellow. Yeah, I would I would bring down the yellow. I would move the yellow to more of a of a of a red. See the yellow kind of right here and like kind of on the sides and on his oh, neck. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just thinking of how I want to do that. And around his eyes too, they're a little bit yellow. Yeah, I can definitely see it here. All right. You're giving me new perspectives to work on here. Let's see how I want to do that. All right, so let's um we're gonna do it gradually. We're gonna feather that out. So let's do this. Let's make a selection around that area. I just want to do some testing here. And I'm gonna really just make this selection very broad. Maybe even open there as well. And now that I've got that selection, I don't want it to be a hard edge, so I've got to feather it out. Uh, we're gonna do modify, feather, and I don't know, we're really gonna make it soft. So how about uh, 15 pixels? All right, so now we got a nice soft selection of that area. And what I might do, so many ways to approach, no, nope, I want that, I want, I want the adjustment panel. I might work with view saturation and brightness. Go to the yellows and just bring down the saturation of yellow in that area. So see that's, if you go too far, it starts to become gray. It starts to take out all the color. So that was just to make sure it was working and maybe just reduce it by about that much. Mm -hmm. How's that looking? Yeah, that's good. All right, so now you now that I've got a method, I could go through and make the, make the selection around all the areas at once and tone it down evenly, or I could do them one by one. All right, so now that I've got that in place, um, let's throw it all away. Because now I want to do it a different way now that I know how I want to do it. Oh, I didn't throw it away. I was like, why didn't yellow come back? There it is. All right, so let's go in. And we got a few minutes for our contest here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make some selections around some areas that I want to do. That's one, holding down my shift key. And get the other areas. And if the, if the yellow wasn't consistent, then I would have to do them all at once, but I'm just gonna take a quick shortcut here. Uh, yeah, down in here especially. Not so bad over here, maybe in this area. Actually, we could just add more into there. And I'm holding down the shift key with the lasso so that I can make these selections all at once and definitely up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's got a lot of yellow going on all up in here. All right. You know, now that you pointed that out, I can't not see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe in here as well. All right, you get the idea? We're running out of time, so I'm not going to be able to do it all of it, but let's just get, say that that's what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. 
Then what we do is again, feather that selection. So select, modify, and all feathering does, if we don't feather, it's, you'll see the line of where it happened. So we don't wanna see the line. So again, we'll feather it by about 15 pixels. That just softens up all of those selections. And then we'll use that same adjustment, um, hue and saturation adjustment. We'll switch the from master to yellows, because that's the area we're trying to reduce. And we'll just take down the saturation not too much, but we can begin to see where it's happening. I would say right about there. Now, because that created an adjustment layer with a mask, that means now you can go to that mask and continue to paint on areas of yellow that you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And you can still dial it in or out wherever you want. So I've got that mask there. I can go in and say, for example, um, if I grab my paintbrush, uh, oh, too big. I can start painting out the yellow in any areas that have it. And could you make them warmer? Sure. So it evens out with the... Um, yep, I can. If we go back to that adjustment, I can go into maybe... Well, I probably would make it warmer a different way. I would probably take that mask onto a different adjustment. Let me think about that for a minute. I would probably do it with that exposure and that vibrance. And select the color. I could do it with a warming photo filter. So let's try that. Now, of course, that's warming up everything. So what I want to do instead is grab that same mask. Let's see if it lets me do this. Replace the mask, yes. There we go. So now we're getting those same areas mm -hmm. with that same uh, effect. Go back to the... There we go. And so now we can warm up those areas that we took the yellow out of. Yeah without like warming up the whole background. I like that. I like it when it's a little bit warmer okay. so that it's even out with all the rest of the... Maybe not that much. Maybe a little bit down. <laughs> <laughs> not the sun. Yeah. All right. Just a touch. Just a touch. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's our before warming, after warming. Subtle. Mm -hmm. That's our before yellow. That's oh, very subtle. And after, just enough. And this is everything we've done so far. So that's our before, before. And this is everything we've done today. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and look at the contest entries. Have okay. you pick our winner. Again, the theme was shoes. Okay. And so it's before on the left and, no, before is, before is on the right and after is on the left. Is that how they did it? Let me see. Uh, I know, it's hard to tell. I think the before is on, or the before is on the right, after is on the left. after is on the left. Yeah. Oh, okay, so... We switch back and forth. All right, got it. Love this one. Let's see here. Okay. This one's very cool. This one's cute. Look at that. Like that one a lot. I think this was our winner from yesterday. Isn't it? Yeah, this is very cool too. So the one that sticks out to me is this one. So whoever this may be, this is my favorite one. This is Tell us why. Um, I just really like what you did with the after. I, I like the kind of more 70s tone that you put on. I like the special effects that you did. I also like the effort that you put into the actual still life part of it. Um, you know, bringing out the little guys and putting the boot in the right place and all that stuff and I also love your cropping in the background so pretty much everything it looks it looks professional and I uh, I like the filter and the effects that you added to it so very cool yeah. and are those little army guys or yeah it's just a cool I like the I dig the concept and I also like that you took out this pipe right here so this little dude right here so we're touching very nice so, yeah and uh, do we know who that is uh, Elena Elena Carrillo Carrillo so congratulations, Eleanor. 
I see it right there, Elena Carrillo. Thank you, Adobe Live Team, for showing that. And um, now, let's go back through the entries real quick, because what people have said they appreciate is when we give them a little critique or advice or what we liked about them, even though they didn't win, mm -hmm. um, like what were maybe like your second or third choices and why? Uh, so I really like this <coughs> one a lot. Um, again, I like the concept and I love what you, you added in some of the color to really bring out the shoes. I thought that was a really good idea. Um, the only thing I would watch is your cropping on the after. Uh, I like it, the cropping a little bit better on this one because you're not cutting off the hat, but I like overall what you did with the color palette. And I also just look for concept and you know how much effort went into it and whatnot. So, um, and then the other one I like, let's see. I like the perspective on this. Oh, we have two little teddy bears going on. Is this the same person? No. Okay. Um, let's see. And I do actually like this one as well. Um, so I just like how it's a little bit different and that you got movement and the perspective is really cool. I don't know if you're in an office right now or what's going on, but um, I like that you just got down on the ground and had a completely different perspective on photographing the shoes. And I like the action and the candid part of it. So, um, so this would probably be my second choice. Very so, cool. Yeah. Was that the last one? Let's see the last couple. This one's really cool too. I like that you added the color in there, the contrast. I definitely like the after one a lot. Um, I dig those pants. All right now, the only go, go back to that one. The only thing I would just just personally, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this great shot. I would maybe even crop it down a little more from the top, mm -hmm. so that we just see the legs leaning forward. We don't see the fact that you're kind of crouched down or whoever that was that was crouched down. Yeah. I agree. Because I like, it looks like they're about to leap or fly off, and I, I like that look. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you could see them, see the legs go back the other way at the top kind of takes that away from me. Yeah. And but then, like, yeah, it's just a personal preference. I, I like the shot overall. Yeah, I agree. I like what you did with the pants here. It really brings out the shine of the pants. Yep, a lot of detail. Looks like some clarity applied there. Like that one. And then this one. I think I like the cropping actually better on this side. Um, but I like what you did with the light on this. Oops. I like that you took out the yellow. And this one is actually really cute too. I like the perspective of this one. I like that you added in the yellow and made it a little bit brighter. I would burn this part down a little bit because my eye kind of goes straight. Also, it's near the center of the image, so automatically your eye kind of sometimes goes there. So I would just burn this down and make it a little bit darker so that it's not such a hot spot in the photo. And then also maybe burn down a little bit um, on the edges so that your focus goes more into the shoes. So so you have a hot spot here, a hot spot there, and then this guy right here. So if you just burn those down a little bit, then I think it would go more to the shoes. Yeah, the I like the concept of that too. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah, I love it. It's super cute. Yeah. All, all it needs is a book, like right in the middle yeah, right? for the teddy bear to be reading a book. So cool lighting on this one. Mhm. Mm Very cool lighting. I would maybe. No, you did it. I was gonna say suggest something, but I see it. You did it. And then that one, I like the um, the kind of vignetting effect and the fact that. You took something that was like just shoes by a wall, but the end result, the end product, doesn't look like it's shoes by a wall. It looks like an actual product shot. Mm -hmm. This is very cool. Yeah, so very nicely done. Good job, you guys. Yep, good job. Yeah, love this one. All right. Yes, never give up. Just because you didn't win this time or didn't win today, that doesn't mean you can't win in the future. Hmm. All right, so let's get down, get to the dodging and burning part. Mm -hmm. All right. So one of the things I can do is I could go back to the original layer and do dodge and burn that. I can make a composite layer. I can you know, do any kind of layers I want to make this happen. So why don't we make the composite? So we'll do uh, Command Shift Option E. That will make us a composite layer on the top. And all that composite layer is is just a composite of literally of all the layers we've done so far. All right, so now that I've got that composite layer, I'm gonna switch it to luminosity. And some will use a 50% gray layer, some will um, use the luminosity layer of the duplicate. So it's just, it's just really up to you. I'm gonna call this one dodge and burn. So we know, to, know what it was for. And then we'll go down and 
And I, I, the, it's a very good point that she made of wanting to take down the, the brightness of the neck because your eye, the human eye by default goes to the lightest area of the photo. Mm -hmm. And that's not where, in this particular case, that's not where you should be looking. So good call on that. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and grab our burn tool. And we'll just make a bigger brush. Stylus here. And we'll just now I'm again I'm using a stylus, so therefore it's pressure sensitive. If I press hard, it will do it a lot at once. If I press lightly, I can kind of blend it in a little a little at a time. Whereas down here it needs to be darker. And up there. Oh. I, think, I think overall the photo's looking a little yellow green, isn't it? Now let's see. Go back to that. Can we make it maybe a little bit more blue, kind of magenta? That's how I see usually. Everyone sees color differently, I guess. But uh, to me, it looks right on. But we really? can try it. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's get this out. Oh, <laughs> let's undo that. So I'm stepping that back a bit. All right. Let's go. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's address your concerns of color there. Bring up a curves adjustment. And you said it's looking a little... A little like yellow green. Yellow green? So maybe... Yeah, just a little more touch of... Too much? Yeah, that's too much. It's just a little touch, like that. All right, mm -hmm. that good? Mm-hmm, and then... So here's our before. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. I couldn't see it until I actually corrected it. Now I see it. Yeah. Good eye. Let's, let's like it. All right, and you want to add another one? Or is that... Add another what? Like another adjustment to take down another color, or...? Um, no, I think that's good. That's it? Okay. Yeah. All right, so that was just simply a curves adjustment layer and just tweaking the, um, the greens down a bit in the midtones to kind of take that cast off of it. I'm still not happy with my dodge and burn layer now. That looks burnt. All right, let me do that again. And we got like two minutes left. That's luminosity. Yeah. Nope. I still don't like. Oh, I, I guess it's just because that area is already dark a bit. So let me go in with a smaller brush. Okay. The, this was throwing me off that that's already dark, and so it just looked darker when I made it darker, obviously. Let's go in. Yeah, there we go. Smaller brush for the win. So I'm painting, or I'm dot, or burning around this area that was already dark, because I don't want that area to get any darker. There we go. Zoom out. Much better. Okay. All right. Now, someone asked earlier, I saw this question, so, and I heard you talk about leaving more headroom for maybe copy or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, when would you shoot it tighter or crop it down? Because um, I know you said you like to make a four by five as well, uh, aspect ratio. Um, yeah, you know, I would probably go on a little bit closer, for example, if I was shooting in a super tight space, I mean, if you don't have that option to have a lot of room, and then also some clients don't know how to crop, and they don't know what they want it as is in camera, because they're not quite sure what to do with it afterwards, so I would just crop it as much as I can for them, so they don't have to crop it themselves. Right. So, um, um, real quick, let's go ahead and save this, we got like 20 seconds left. And we're going we're gonna to take a break. We're going to come back for Ashley Batts. She's going to do some more work. But once we save and close that, that will come back to Lightroom um, as, a, as a stacked copy. 
And then of course we can work on it non-destructively here, but that will lose our layers. So just make sure that you can, if you're gonna go to Photoshop, do it all in Photoshop. So with that said, Still have 20 seconds? <laughs> okay. Maybe we can kind of blow through some of the lighting on Carlos just so you guys can see what we did. All right. Yeah, so we can start from, just so you guys can see like the Rembrandt lighting, the split lighting, and how we changed the background. And you guys remember we used a silver umbrella, we used a white beauty dish. Um, and so these That's are where all. We're playing with the rim light. The we background. were showing like the background so you guys can add layers. And so you can do so many different things just by moving him. So him facing the, the light on the left. And then, you know, I mean, there's just a lot you guys can do. And you can do it in like about five minutes. You can make it look like it's three separate photo shoots happening. And this is what will happen sometimes if you get like a magazine job and the photo photo editor and you're shooting a celebrity and the photo editor is like you have exactly three minutes and we want two different looks, three different looks. This is how you can achieve it real quickly, just switching on and off different lights right. and making them angle. And that's it. We're out. Yeah. Thanks everybody.